Look at all these pillows. What's the protocol here? Am I allowed to like take my mask off? Or do I know customers? Look, the guy might have hand sanitizer. Oh, we're live. Pam's excited about hand sanitizer. Wait, wait, don't reveal who our secret guest is yet. We have a surprise for you. Hey, Donna. Somebody special. Somebody special is joining me today. Hi, Libby. Oh, I won't show you yet. Look, Joyce got her. She got her AccuQuilt quilt back. Isn't it pretty? Oh my gosh, we love it. Hey, Vicki. Hey, Lib. Hi, Janet. This is our fun time. We have 26 of you in your seats. Students, take your seats. Hi, Julie. Hi, Melanie. I did at least two Hi, Carol. drop offs today. They said, see you at three. All see right, here I am. Shall I pass it over to Katie? Shall we introduce our special guest today? I'm so excited. Hi, Kay. Hi, Lisa. Oh, it's, it's still on selfies. Okay. Hey! Oh, it's Katie. She's not our special guest. No, neither is Kathy. No, okay, it's on you now. I brought in another teacher because you guys know I'm happier when I'm not the teacher. So I brought in very special. Hello! Hey! period because we know you guys get tired um so pam is going to instruct me on how to put in a zipper so this is kind of like me trying to do the curves for the first time it'll be me doing the zippers the way she does it so we'll see what good, how well it, you do it teaching me right <laughs> i can't believe, all right do you think she's going to be a good student can i get this done in 20 minutes that's the we'll, question. we'll see so, okay so anyways a lot of people have asked about how to finish a pillow and so i'm going to um, talk about the pillow backs because you all have things that you can put in a pillow front. So you might have a piece of embroidery or you just take a piece of fabric because you want to make a throw pillow. So anyways, we're going to focus on two kinds of backs today. And one of them is what I call, it's kind of an invisible zipper. So you can, it's really hard to see that there's a zipper here, but there is a zipper here um, and another one like this. So, and it doesn't matter what the front is, you can figure out your front. It's the back that we're gonna focus on today. But don't feel like the back has to just be blah. Um, this was just a one that I pieced. I didn't have enough fabric of either of these on the front, so I just pieced the back and did it. Um, here's another zippered back. You don't have to make them plain. You can add decorative stitching on it. Ooh. And if you don't like the zippers, but after I get finished today, you will put zippers in, okay? So I like to teach this in my beginning class, and people say I hate zippers, but hopefully after you see Kathy sew today, let's face it, if Kathy can do it, anybody can do that's it, right? That's right, that's right. <laughs> um, but anyways, these are button backs. So if you rather do buttonholes, you can also do a button back. And, um, if we get to it, but we may not. This is the coveted back that everybody wants to do. It's the covered, and it's kind of a professional looking. Just, I like that one a lot. It's Yeah, this is the favorite. So this will be the third pillow that we do if we get to it. So anyways, um, we can talk about pillow fronts later, but when we do pillows of any kind, when I do the pillow back, I always use SF-101 interfacing. So I don't know if you all are familiar with SF-101, but it's become one of my favorite staples in my house. So it's a fusible interfacing. And so here at Quilt Beginnings, we sell 100% cotton fabric, good quality 100% cotton fabric. But if you've ever tried to add a ruffle or you try to add cording or you try to add something to the pillow front and add the pillow back, have you ever like poke through the corner or you start to feel like things bunch up? So if we use the SF-101, it turns our 100% good quality cotton into what feels more like 
home deck fabric. Right. And I want to interject for just yeah. one second because SF 101 has been on back order for weeks and we just got in 12 bolts of it. So we're very ah! excited because a lot of people are using it for face masks. So it's Thanks. a good backing. It is a woven, but it still has, it just adds a lot of body. It is fusible. Um, and we've been putting it in a lot of the face masks because it's also breathable. So And we are working through our lists of SF 101. So we will be calling you if you're on our list. We have uh, a lot of you on our list. Yes. yes. It's like our elastic all over again. <laughs> I buy it by the bolt. Don't even buy it. Don't even buy it. Five year limit. So, anyways, when you go to put the SF 101, I'm just going to use a plain pillow front because we're not focusing on fronts and we're going to work on the pillow back. So, let's say I wanted to do just a throw pillow and I want about a 12 inch pillow. So, this is larger than 12 inches. So, what I usually do is cut a piece of fabric first and cut a piece of SF 101 and iron it on. You technically want the SF-101 to be a little bit smaller because when you iron it, you don't want to get it on your iron, okay? Mm -mm. And we Especially find that our good iron. We don't yes, want SF-101. We SF got a new iron here, um, <laughs> Joyce's favorite iron. So anyways, I like to iron the SF-101 on the back of my fabric, iron it on real well, and then if I were going to make a 12 inch pillow, I would cut this into a 12 and a half inch square. And this would be the front of my pillow. This has not been cut down but I would cut it to 12 and a half inches if I want a 12 inch pillow. I'm always going to cut the back of my pillow larger than the front of my pillow. And I'm gonna turn this over so you can see it. But when I say larger, remember, this is gonna get cut down to 12 and a half inches. I wanna have a good inch on both sides of the pillow, okay? And you're gonna see why in a minute as we go on, but just know you're always going to make your pillow back larger, a lot larger than your pillow front. I always say it's easier to uh, uh, waste an inch or two of fabric than to have your back smaller than your pillow front because you're not going to be able to cut down your pillow front. We can cut down the pillow back. Then you want to leave the length a couple of inches longer on both sides because we're going to put a zipper in and we need room for our seam allowance or we're going to put buttons in and we need room for the interfacing, okay? So I would iron it on and I would be ready to go. So the first kind of back that we're gonna do is what I like to call an exposed zipper back, okay? And the exposed zipper is really popular now on clothing. So if you follow the fashion world, they like to use pretty zippers and show them on the back of a dress or on a jacket as opposed to having them hidden. And this is probably the easiest one to put in. So let's pretend that this is my pillow front, okay? You can see that I've made my pillow back a whole lot larger, okay? So I'm gonna give Miss Kathy. Oh no, I have to do this? <laughs> this is Kathy's <laughs> pillow front. She's actually gonna construct a pillow today. So this is her pillow front, okay? I have taken her pillow back and I have made it larger on the sides. So good at holding things up. I love it. No one else has held things up for me. <laughs> and then I've made it longer this way, okay? So here's her pillow front. Now Kathy gets to decide where she wants the zipper in her pillow back. Some people want them like at the top so that it's off center. Other people like things more centered up, okay? So I'm gonna give this to Kathy and Kathy can make her cut wherever she wants to make it. Don't worry that it's bigger. Don't worry if things are even. Everything's going to get squared up in the end. So, I Kathy, like you it. can decide if you want your pillow zipper towards the top, if you want it in I the middle. I am definitely not centered, so I'm okay. going to come over and do, like, a top one. How about, like, here? Perfect. A little bit down, a little. Get, leave it a little more. Perfect. Like that? Yes. All right. Okay. And I just cut? Yep. She's just going to cut it. Look, I cut it. Success! Okay. <laughs> now... She's leaving it lay like this, and if your fabric is directional, she wants to make sure that when she puts the zipper in, that she keeps it in that direction, right? So if she's got a pattern, we wanna make sure that the pattern is going the same way. So the first thing that she's going to do is, we're just gonna do a seam. She's gonna do a quarter inch seam allowance. She's going to take her zipper, and do you notice how long the zipper is? We want the zipper to extend at least one inch on both sides of the fabric, okay? If you have ever put a zipper in, what is the hardest part to go around? It's the zipper tab itself. So we're not gonna sew around the zipper tab. 
that's going to get cut off, okay? So I got a zipper. It's much longer. I don't care how much longer. It just can't be shorter. And what we're going to do first is we're just going to put it right sides together. And Kathy's going to sew down a quarter inch. No zipper foot? No zipper foot. Just straight on quarter down. Inch seam allowance. I think just I can do it. Straight on down. You're as good a teacher as, as Joyce was. I like it when you guys give me things to do. Go, Kathy. Go, Kathy. <laughs> and I'm sewing in the dark again so you guys can see. I'm just holding my zipper along the edge. And I'm right side down. My dual feet is not on. Let me put that on. Oh, come on. There we go. All right. Just straight down. I do have the quarter inch foot on. But it's riding, it kind of rides up on the coil. That's interesting. Is that what you do? Um, every quarter inch foot's a little bit different, but it is okay. You just want a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. Ooh, I don't know if I'm sewing very straight, Pam. I'm not used to this ridge. That's okay. I like a teacher that encourages me. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> the ridge don't matter. So we have it right sides together. And now what we are going to do is we're going to go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to press it over. Okay? You mean the ironing board? Ironing board. I'm sorry. <laughs> what do you press with? The sewing machine? <laughs> sure. Sometimes. If you're really good, you can. So, but I'll use the iron to do it. Okay? So I'm just kind of pulling this out and ironing it. I'm really worried about getting that SF-101 at the end on Joyce's iron. Not a good thing. Okay. So I'm just going to push it over like that. Okay, now you can probably guess what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take this piece, and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight, because once again, the back is so much larger than the front, it doesn't have to be perfect. But now what Kathy's going to do is she's gonna flip this side over, and we've got it kinda lined up, right? So can you see how I've just kinda got this edge and that edge lined up? And now she's gonna sew a quarter inch down that way. Do you always put your zipper on the top, Pam? I do, because it's easier to see it, yeah. but you don't have to. And like Kathy was saying in her um, video when she was doing the strip piecing, you want to make sure that that underneath fabric doesn't slip under the zipper and you totally miss it. So she's just going to sew down that way again. Look, Ma, no pins. And are you catching your bottom fabric? I am because I'm checking. I'm doing exactly what she said. I just check and make sure I see it. And then I carry on. Pam, where did you get this fabric? Right here. Oh, do we have? It's all gone. It's all gone. Not, everyone it's, wants it. We oh sold it all. <laughs> we, this was a quilt that's hanging in the front window that Pam it was, made. Yeah, it was left over, and I thought, oh, we'll we sell the rest of the fabric. I guess I should have called it. it. Okay, so now I'm going to bring it back over to the ironing board, and I'm going to press over the other side. And while I'm doing this, Kathy's going to put on her, her um, edge joining foot. So, edge joining foot. Yes, yeah, so a narrow edge joining foot. And Kathy, do you want to show them what that yeah. looks like? So the edge joining foot is the one that has a wide opening so that you can move your needle position and it has the center flange so that you can put the flange on the seam that you want to uh, go up against your high seam, but you can move your needle over so that it catches and runs below do it. Do you want to so show them? The... So what we're going to do is top stitch on there. So I'm going to run my flange right along this ridge and then I'm going to move my needle over so it's up on top of the, um, the so fabric. fabric. If yeah. you look at the one, I did a purple zipper, and I'm sorry, I only had so many zippers at Man, home that I could work with. Oh my goodness. Yours but if perfect. you look here, you can see, and I'm just doing that to hold it down. So she's going to just move her needle over to reinforce that zipper. So we'll have her do that. I need to move my needle over a couple more. Oh, you know what? My straight stitch must be on because it's not moving over. That's what's happening. Uh oh. Why is my... So I did chain. Remember last week I um, changed my throw plate and I changed it again. And now I forgot to tell it that I have on a wide throw plate, so it's not moving my needle over. So I'm like, why is my needle sewing right Safety. below my feet? And now I have to change it. Pam, what foot for baby lock? It is, it's still called a narrow edge joining foot. It, on this one, I don't know what the number is on Bernina, but it's called a narrow edge joining foot. And so if you keep the needle in the center position, you're just stitching in the ditch. So you definitely don't want to do that because if you kept it in the center position, you would just be sewing along the edge of the zipper. And I actually want to move it over 
so that it's holding that fabric down. So you can see right here, and if yeah. I turn it over, you can see that there's sewing the zipper in. That's why there's two lines showing there, but it's gonna reinforce that zipper. Okay. Boy, this sure makes sewing down the side easy. Yeah, so while Kathy's finishing that, I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do next. So if this were my pillow front, okay, and this is my pillow back, I was imagining that my throw pillow would have the stripes going up and down, okay? Um, and then I like the zipper on the back to go across, okay? So if you look at my pillow down here, is that done? Kathy? Yeah, okay. So if you look at it here, when I lay my top on the bottom, you can see that I've got plenty of room to go over everything. There's yours if you want to do it. Okay. Am I sewing around? Yes. Well, so, hold on. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold <laughs> on. Why don't you want to do it yet? Because my zipper pulls out here. Correct. Uh, so, where is it? Uh-oh. So, if you look at either of these, and can, maybe it might be easier to see the purple zipper. But I just want to make sure that you see that I have plenty of fabric all the way around the edge of it, okay? But if I were to sew this, now what some people want to do is cut it beforehand. You can cut it beforehand if you want, but I find if you sew it and then cut it, if you don't have a perfect square, or especially if you've added cording, ruffles, or any of that and it's shrunk in on one side, if you cut it after the fact, you're going to end up with a square pillow or a square pillow. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I've got to open my zipper or the zipper is going to be useless. Okay? <laughs> so I'm going to open my zipper up here if I can get a hold of it. Okay? And then I want to make sure that this stays closed. So some people like to just go over here in the seam allowance and sew back and forth. Totally up to you. I guarantee Kathy's just going to sew across, <laughs> right? Yes. Okay. And you also want to know that these are plastic teeth. So plastic teeth you can sew across. Correct. But if you use a metal tooth you're gonna zipper, you don't want to sew across because you will break your needle. Every time. Yes. So Every just time. a word of caution. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, and I don't know which one you want to sew, but you can open yours up. We're just going to sew a quarter inch. Does it matter how far down? You want to open it far enough that you can get your fingers through there to pull it down. Okay, okay? because if you don't have it open far enough, you're, you're trying to reach through and you're trying to stick something through to get that zipper and pull. What size, so just, what size seam allowance do you like? Quarter this? inch. Okay, I so still like to inch? use the quarter inch. Okay. Okay. Now, and you're letting the size of the top dictate Correct, the size of the, because okay. I cut that square, okay? But if you had made a pillow, or if you had done an embroidery or something like that, the top is going to dictate the size of your pillow. Now, so, Kathy said what size seam allowance? I use a quarter inch seam allowance. I don't have to worry about raveling. Why? Because I've added the SF-101. So since the SF-101 is on there, I can use a much more narrow seam allowance and not worrying about something fraying. Do okay. You, do you um, pivot at your corners or do you sew off and sew I back pivot on? at my corners. Absolutely. Okay. Pivot at my corners. And then I'm going to show you how to trim the corners. If you had a 12 inch pillow form, what size top would you do? It's so funny. Everybody asks that. I always worked from the top and then by my pillow form. But the answer is I like my pillows nice and plump. Okay. So if you like a plump pillow, if you like a plump pillow, you should buy a pillow form that is two inches larger than your finished pillow top, okay? So if you have a 14 inch finished pillow, I would buy a 16 inch pillow form. So now ask me the question again. So if you have a 12 inch pillow form. If you have a 12 inch pillow form, you want to start with basically a 10 inch top and shove the 12 inch pillow. Just in shove it in there. Okay. Get now, it plump. I'm glad you asked that question. Um, because when I buy my pillow forms, I like to buy, now we, you know, I could make a pillow form and stuff it with the polyester fiber fill, but by the time you get done with the pillow, who wants to do that? So I usually just buy a pillow form that has a zipper in them. I buy them when they're uh, half price or buy them wholesale and I stuff it in here. Now, if you have a really weird size pillow like this. A weird size pillow? I just don't know if they hear you <laughs> when you walk away. Oh, I'm sorry. I know. I got to stay closer. If you have a pillow that you can't buy a pillow form for, I know that you can buy a pillow form that's 14 by 28. It's overkill for this pillow, right? So what I do, again, I could make my own pillow form and stuff it and put it in here. But I buy the 14 by 28. I open up their zip.
zipper and I hold the pillow against here, which comes out to about here, and I take out all the stuffing that's here, okay? And then I fold their pillow form back. Now, that extra stuffing that you have saved, because everyone says when I put my pillow form in here, I, this, these corners, I just can't get the stuff in there, okay? Well, if anybody looked at my pillow form and they opened it up, they could see that this is washable, right? So they're never gonna see what's in the corners. So what you do is you take that extra stuffing and you just stuff it up <laughs> in the corners and nobody ever sees that. Works every time, okay? All right, Kathy, you got that finished? I got that finished. Okay, so now what Kathy's gonna do is she's gonna trim that using the rotary cutter and she's going to slice right through those zippers. Oh, and since no. it's a plastic or nylon zipper, we can cut right through it. And I'm just gonna use the top as my guide. Okay, Kathy, I'm going to tell you, pick up the pace. <laughs> I know. As uh -oh. I was saying, we only have time for one zipper, Pam. We thought we had time for two. You might have to come back. <laughs> we might have to talk through the next version. <laughs> time flies when you're having fun. Always. All I can say. This part I know. Oh, I need my rounder mat. Pam, Joyce would be, although this is a little bit longer. It is too big. I thought yeah, about this that is after too big. I brought that over. So, right through those teeth. Look, Pam, my pillow's almost done. Yay! Okay, when you get finished with this, you are going to take and we're going to slice at an angle across the corner, okay? And then we're going to slice in a bit. Slice Can I in? Show you? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do that and we're going to do this to take out some of the bulk. Okay, so we're going to like that. Cool. Kind of angle it. Okay. okay. Now, I do want to tell you that a lot of people say they get really pointy pillows. Okay. So one of the things that you can do is if, if you're getting a pointy pillow <laughs> is round your corners. When you round a corner, you will get a more square pillow. So let me grab a, a thing. So here is a corner of a pillow, and so here is my quarter inch mark and my quarter inch mark. If you're finding that you're getting really pointy pillows, then what you want to do is just kind of round that corner. The only thing is you have to round it the same way every time. So for a lot of people, it's easier to draw it on there and round that corner, okay? And now Kathy's going to turn that inside out. Wow. You've almost made a pillow. I know, and it's so close. This is my favorite tool. This really works well to poke out the corners. Boy, trimming that bulk really helps too. It this does. Is, when you trim sideways and then really, in, it really takes that out. That's a really good tip. But when you use this, you can really poke those corners out and iron it and stuff your pillow. What is that? It. This is, we sell these. This is a precision point turner and it's got like a chopstick end for big areas. And then you've got this fine point. But I'm sure that most of you, when you've done corners, you've actually poked through a corner. The SF-101 is gonna help that, and the um, little point here is going to help I think that. we should just do one pillow so, today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a student, you're like, I'm, I got lots of ideas in there. <laughs> she can, I know, Pam, this was, this was chock full of information. <laughs> Who knew that putting a zipper in could be so easy? Well, I have to tell you guys that the covered zipper I really do a really different way. So if you guys want to see that one, will you come back? Us. Yeah, oh, I'd love gosh. to. I'd love to. Excellent. Look, I got my pillow done. Da, 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 da. And look, it's reversible. You can show the other da, side. Da, da, da. And it's, da, so, da, da, da. hope you guys like it. So yeah. I'd love to come back. We, you will come back? Yeah, I yeah. miss everybody. So. Okay, so I got good news. Pam's going to come back, but I have some other news, and that's th we are going to start weaning you from your 3 o'clock Facebook Lives. Um, we've decided that we actually have Emily back. Say hi, to Emily. Hi. Yay! Emily's back. Um, Emily is our graphics designer, lovely wizard in the back office, and we actually do want to start doing some real video content for you. So we Wait a minute. This wasn't real? Well... <laughs> 
but we want to actually expand what we're doing with our video and have some more um, polished, I'll say polished video um, that cuts out the, all the, well, we won't cut out all the blips, but a few. Um, but anyway, we're going to go to a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule this week, and we're going to work towards um, weaning ourselves off of Facebook and weaning ourselves back into real life, which we hope can resume here in the next few weeks. We still know we're not going to open May 12th um, for sure. We want to let the rest of the world kind of open up and see what happens. Um, we want to stay safe. We're going to keep doing the curbside. We're still serving all of you in the best way we can. Um, but I loved having Pam today. Thank you. I just and, wanted um, to show them that your pillow... When she cut the pillow off, do you see how this is the pillow stop here and the pillow stop here? And she got perfectly straight lines because we didn't have to sew around that zipper tab. So, I hope you learned something. Okay, I just want to iron it for you, Kathy. The perpetual teacher. I'm so glad to have you here today. So glad. So we'll see you guys on Wednesday at 3 o'clock.